Alright guys and welcome back to the Dawn channel. I am the Dawn Father and I'm now going to be reacting to Geography Now Germany and this video was made by Geography Now who have 1.4 million subscribers on YouTube so please check out their stuff if you're only discovering them now and subscribe to them because they do unbelievable amount of videos and they're top top quality stuff and you'll learn something about different countries around the world you might not already know. So anyway, this was requested to me a while ago by one of my subscribers who asked again. Um, apologies for not getting to doing it straight away and it's took me a while. Um, I hope you appreciate that it's been difficult for me to get around to doing it. So no more talking anyway, let's put Geography Now Germany on. Let's go! Alright. Leader Hosen Schnitzel beer, Bratwurst order bread and beer, complicated history beer, no humor, EDM, and gummy bears that will kind of like give you diarrhea, but it's like worth it. Ugh, this is such a horrible <laughs> stereotypes that every German is so sick and tired of hearing. One gummy bear? <laughs> it's time to learn geography now! Hey everyone, I'm your host Barbie. So, we've conquered Belgium's castle, jumped through Denmark's lagoon, danced through France's forest, and now we've made it to the final boss of the EU, Kingpin Germany. Level 1. Begin. Ah, you know why I'm smiling. Yep, Germany has a lot of territorial anomalies. We'll get into that in a little bit, but first. Germany is located in central western Europe, bordered by nine other countries, don't forget little Luxembourg, with small coasts on the North and Baltic seas, which they own about 50 small islands. Now, Germany, like the US, is a federal republic which has 16 smaller states, or Bundeslande, each with its own constitution, three of which are cities, the capital Berlin, Hamburg, and Bremen, which is actually kind of like two cities, including Bremerhaven on the coast, but they kind of act like... No. Alright, never knew that. Fun side note, Lower Saxony is actually geographically situated further north than regular Saxony. Now let's jump into the fun stuff. Now we That's already discussed the U-Bolt's Quadrapoint and the Venban Railway enclaves with Belgium and Austria. However, there's a few more. The entire town of Bussingen am Hochrhein is surrounded by Switzerland, whereas part of the Constance is cut off by the Rhine River and surrounded by Switzerland. However, immediately across the river, a small patch of empty land on the German side actually belongs to Switzerland. So it's in and out, in and out. Split the island of Usedom with Poland in the north. Germany is interesting because every state in the country has its own distinct culture, dialect, history, food, traditions. I mean, Bavarians will be quite drastically different from Schwestlig Holsteiners. Mecklenburg-Pommern will be different from Saarland. This all has to do with ancient and recent history. Basically, in the quickest way I can summarize this, Germanic tribes, Roman wars, Charlemagne, three kingdoms, this guy marries an Italian, creating a whole new mess called the Holy Roman Empire made up of 300 smaller separate kingdoms, states, and dukedoms, which had nothing to do with Romans. Teutonic Knights, Brandenburgs became Prussia, Habsburgs became Austrians, Lithuanians and Poles made their own thing, whereas the Hungarians joined the Austrians. Wars, wars, battles, battles. Napoleon comes over and messes everything up. And finally, German <laughs> nationalism surges. And in 1871, Otto von Bismarck creates the first proto German unified state. And then they're all like, oh, dang, we came late to this game. We got to scramble for some colonies. And that's how all of these countries at one point spoke German. Oh, and also keep in mind, like 300 years before this, a German banking company obtained colonial rights to Venezuela for like 20 years. They were looking for the lost city of El Dorado. So technically, you can kind of say Germans colonized the Americas, but it wasn't like a nationalized conquest thing. Fast forward even more, and then you get World War One. The monarchy ends, Treaty of Versailles, they lose land, Nazis come in, World War II, Germany splits in two for about 40 years, and then finally, we get the Germany we have today. East Germany consisting of these states is today still quite different from the rest of Germany as it was first occupied and influenced by the Soviet Union. Mm -hmm. They are generally not as well off economically as the rest of the country, as you can still see the blocky Soviet yeah. style buildings sprawled throughout the regions. In fact, the city of Berlin was split in half, and the west side was actually an enclave of West Germany, only except accessible by train and highway. You can even see from a satellite image the divide. East Berlin still uses the yellowish tinted sulfur vapor light bulbs, whereas the West still uses fluorescent and mercury arc white tinted light bulbs. Now the funny thing right. is, although Berlin is the largest city in Germany, the busiest airports are actually Frankfurt, Munich, Dusseldorf, with Berlin Tegel ranking at number four. Oh. Otherwise, some top notable landmarks and spots would be the Brandenburg Gate, yeah, the Halle, Cologne Cathedral, the wow. Westminster Church, the tallest in the world, the Berlin Victory Column, and hundreds and hundreds of castles all over the most notable some Beautiful castle. Einstein, the concept behind Disney's Cinderella castle. Wow. Germany also has over 400 zoos, more than any other country in the world. And of course, everybody knows about the Autobahn, zoos. the highway system. I love the Autobahn. Sign, it means there's no speed limit. And it's like that for a huge portion of it's the world. It's amazing. And no wonder, considering how vast and wide those countrysides can get. Time for level two. 
Okay, think of it this way. In Germany, the more down you go, the more up you yeah. go. Basically, Germany lies on the yeah, Atlantic ouch. shelf in the north that starts with the mud Southern islands Germany. and the North Sea. Seriously, this island right here is accessible only for a few hours by foot until the tide comes and floods everything. Then oh, it oh, goes up that's in, amazing. The in the south by Bavaria and Baden-Württemberg, with the highest mountain, Zugspitze, located right along the border with Look Austria. Look at that, that's incredible. Germany is filled with a vast irrigating network of rivers like the Spray, Elbe, Vesa, Rhine, and of course, the mighty Danube that starts here. About a third of the land is arable, and another third is woodland, and after a millennia of civilization, Germans have cultivated the crap out of their country. Most agriculture, of course, happens in the North Flat Plains and the central regions of the country, which is, by the way, kind of like Europe's tornado alley. Due to its position sandwiched between the Arctic blasts of Scandinavia and the moist, warm jet streams of the Mediterranean below, Germany can be an atmospheric war zone in the summer. There are more tornadoes on average in Germany than any other country in Europe. Speaking of wow. farmland, Germany is the world's largest rye and hop producer. Germans abso freaking lutely love their bread. There are over 300 different kinds of bread in the country, more types than any other bread. country in the world, and almost every meal incorporates some kind of slice or small bun or brötchen of bread. Hast du gluten free? Nein! <laughs> Germans are heavy meat eaters, specifically in pork. They basically know every possible way to cook a pig. Over 50 different types of sausage exist alongside schnitzels, rouladen, sauerbraten, schweinsaxe, and at a big party you might find Spanfackel. Beer reigns supreme all over as the third largest consumers of beer after the Czech Republic, even their president has no problem with public intoxication, <laughs> and Austria. Germany is world renowned for their beer, which by the way follows the Rheinheitskegel oh, rule in which they're only allowed to use water, hops, malt, and sometimes yeast. Nonetheless, about 1,300 breweries exist, pumping out over 5,000 brands. The oldest continuously existing brewery in the world, started by Benedictine monks in 1040 AD, can be found here. Germany takes the environment very seriously and for the past two decades has been going on a major green revolution. As of today, they have the largest installed solar power capacity and green infrastructure practices like home installed turbines and solar panels have seen a huge surge in the past 10 years. Forests dominate the southern regions where the landscape gets hilly. Oh, that's beautiful the looking, isn't it? Famous one being the Black Forest or the Schwarzwald. Wow, Schwarzwald. look at that Black Forest. Deer, bears, boar, foxes, badgers, and the national animal, the eagle, can be found thriving in these parts. Nonetheless, economically, Germany is known mostly for their exceptional engineering and industry. engineering Companies geniuses of, in like Germany. Volkswagen, BMW, Car producers. Mercedes, Benz, Porsche, Audi, Telecom, Nivea, DHL, Bosch. Adidas! Puma! Adidas! Puma! Yeah, it's kind of like the whole Biscoito Bolacha thing from Brazil. Remember? Well, we have mud flats, tornadoes, pork, beer, mountains. All that's missing is people. Level three. Damn. Fun little side note, in Germany, this is three, not this. Now, if the EU was a family, Germany would kind of be like the dad who got out of rehab, reconciled with his wife and kids, and is taking his new life very seriously as he is haunted by the demons of his past every day. First of all, the country has about 82 million people and is the most populated in the EU, second most in Europe after Russia, and has the fourth largest nominal GDP in the world. About 80% of the country identifies as ethnically German, 12% other Europeans, mostly Polish, Italian, Dutch, and so on. Turks make up about 3.5%, Asians at 2%, and the rest are made up of other groups like Africa. Africans and Americans. Also, they use the Euro, they use the C and F type outlets, and they drive on the right side of the road. Germany is without a doubt a global powerhouse. It is the strongest economy in the EU and makes up about 16% of the union's population. It's the third largest exporter and importer of goods in the world. After the United States, Germany is also the second most popular global migration destination. Oh, right, I never realized that. A high standard of living, tuition free universities, if you get accepted, that is, a mostly government subsidized universal healthcare system, about a quarter is still privatized, and state pension for retirement at age 65. Now, when it comes to language, things get a little tricky. Each state kind of has their own type of German. However, to get by, most Germans learn how to speak Hochdeutsch, or High German, which is the standard dialect. The European Charter, however, protects the minority languages of Frisian, Danish, Romani, Sorbian, which is like a Slavic-based language used along the Czech-Polish border, and Plattdeutsch, or Low German, which has similarities to Dutch and is typically used by the Amish and Mennonite communities oh, across right. the world. In terms of regional distinctions, though, Germany is kind of divided into five cultural areas. Rhineland, East, and Middle Deutschland. Norddeutschland, Baden-Württemberg, and Bavaria. Rhineland is on the west side and has a well, look at that. tower on the hill. France, more Catholics, Carnival celebrations are huge out here. Yeah, East and Germany was the part that used to be its own country for 40 years as it was influenced by the Soviets. Sorbians can also be found here too. Northern Germany has a coastal sea culture that identifies closer with Denmark and the Netherlands. They are also known for being kind of quiet and reserved. Baden-Württemberg has an interesting Swabian culture where they speak a dialect so thick that only about 40% of it is intelligible to others. What are they wearing on their face? Bavaria, what is that? Which is where 
where the Americanized perpetuated stereotypes about Germany came from with Leder Hosen, like beer. Timber, beer houses and cuckoo clocks. For the record, Germans are sick of those stereotypes. It's like saying all Americans are cowboys with guns and horses. <laughs> Speaking of stereotypes, some of the stereotypes in Germany include things like Saxons being very indecisive, Berliners are always bragging about themselves, Swabians are stingy, Bavarians drink too much, Hessians talk too much, Holsteiners don't talk enough, and so on. Words differ from regions too. For example, in High German, you would say Auf Wiedersehen, but in Bavarian, you would say Fiat die Gott. In Kölsch, you would say Tschüss, and in Rhineland, you might say Ayus. And there's so many compound words to get really long and complicated, like Rindfleischer, Ticketierungs, Überwachungsaufgaben, Übertragungsgesetz. <coughs> this is because no many words are wertfuldig, or ambiguous words that are kind of elongated to give off an extensive meaning. Germans have very vivid imaginations and make up words for everything. Like my favorite word, Backpfeifengesicht. Not this time. By the way, for the record, this letter makes a double S sound. However, spelling reformers have tried to decrease the usage of this letter in recent years, which has led to some protests. Germans also also love dubbing everything from foreign media into German. Some like this, some don't, but either way, it's here to stay. About 60% of the country identifies at least nominally as Christians, split between Protestants and Catholics. Germany was even the birthplace of the Protestant Reformation, split from the Catholic Church by Martin Luther. Martin Luther. Otherwise, the rest are mostly agnostic or irreligious, with a noticeable community of Muslims, mostly from the huge Turkish and Middle Eastern communities, at about 5%, as well as a few Jews, Buddhists, and Hindus rounding up the remainder 1%. To kind of get a feel of what it's like to be German, you kind of have to understand where where they've come from. After World War II, they kind of had a lot of work to do. However, it wasn't until the mid 50s and early 60s that the Wirtschaftswunde or economic wonder happened to which almost everybody got to work. Basically, this guy envisioned and implemented a social market economy combined with free market capitalism alongside socialist policies that established fair competition in a welfare state. GDP increased by 80%, investments by 120%, wow. labor forces were utilized to the maximum. Things started to get better. In Germany, all children are corralled into general public schools until age 10 when they are given the option to enroll in three different types of middle schools. Gymnasium, geared towards focusing on higher linguistic, mathematic, and science fields for universities. Realschule, a middle a good idea. school, and Hauptschule, a school that is geared towards helping kids that seem to show promise in specific vocation or trade. Because you're yeah, actually identifying the, identify the strengths of the pupil in the rather than saying do this, they love which is a great idea. Culture through music and art. In fact, there are around 130 national orchestras mostly supported by public money and Artists get a 50% reduction in health insurance through a special type of offer in the legal system. One thing that still kind of supposedly maintains itself in Germany is the mindset of Vergangenheitsbewältigung. Totally butchered that, which kind of translates to a lingering sense of guilt from the past. Germans have reportedly some of the lowest levels of national pride, and unless if you're at a soccer game, chances are you will almost never see anyone holding a German flag or waving it in any kind of like patriotic setting. It's weird, but it's kind of how things are. You monster. They've made great strides <laughs> to move on from the past. Not Nazi flags and Mein Kampf are incredibly illegal items to own in Germany, and they even have a rule, the Volkswertzung, which basically says you cannot talk trash by denying the past atrocities. Some people say this infringes on free speech, others say it's good because it solidifies truth. Otherwise, some notable Germans throughout history include Charlemagne, although he was a Frank, but eh, I guess it kind of counts, Albrecht, Dürr, David Friedrich, Gutenberg, Bach, Beethoven, Karl Benz, Albert Einstein, although Americans would like to claim that he moved to the US and became an American, Johannes Kepler, Johann Wolfgang von Goethe, Friedrich Friedrich Schiller, Michael Shoemaker, Some serious von people. Humboldt, and of course Karl Marx and Friedrich Engels co-founded Marxism. <clears throat> but one thing Germans do best would have to be diplomacy. To this day, the German passport holds the most visa-free nations out of any other country in the world, just beating Sweden. Therefore, you can kind of conclude that Germany kind of knows how to relate to people. Let's find out how in the final round, level four. Germany knows how to make friends. They have over 220 diplomatic missions abroad and over 350 honorary consuls and have an incredibly high position of authority in the EU. Their closest African friend would probably be Namibia. As a former German colony way back in the 19th century, Namibia held on relations and to this day, German is still a recognized language in Namibia. Right? Germans have been supporting and sharing ties both economically and ideologically for over a century. India and South Korea are really close friends in Asia. India supported both East and West Germany during the Cold War and after reunification, they were like, woohoo! Even better! And Germany is to South Korea what Japan is to France. They love to piggyback off of each other's ideas and cultures, especially in the automotive industry. Many South Koreans were sent to Germany after the Korean War to work abroad and study, and Germans have been growing in fascination with visiting South Korea. The US is probably the closest ally outside of the EU. About 30% of Americans claim German heritage, and after World War II, the Marshall Plan allowed the US to give post-war aid to Germany, which helped kickstart the economic recovery. Germany was a key figure in the formation of the State of Israel after World 
World War II, which after the Holocaust left an obligation to invest in the building up of a Jewish community. Turkey is probably the closest Middle Eastern ally as the Turks make up the largest Asian demographic in Germany, although many of them may or may not also identify as Kurds. But since Kurds don't have a state of their own, they usually go under Turkish passports when immigrating and are documented as such. Their best friends, however, would probably be literally all their neighbors. The thing is, Germany is kind of like Bosnia and Herzegovina in which by default, they kind of get friends based off of the regional alliances. <laughs> Bavarians get along with Austrians, Baden-Württembergs get along with Switzerland, East Germany has good relations with the Slavic countries, the Rhine states love Belgium, Luxembourg, and France, and the North side loves the Netherlands and Denmark. France though is kind of like the trophy wife of Germany as the two have had an angry start but then eventually fell in love and worked together beautifully. France is like the beautiful flashy spokesperson for the EU that stands in the spotlight as Germany stands in the background managing all the money and logistics. Yeah, in yeah. Conclusion, yeah. They pull the strings all the French do the talking. <laughs> the German state didn't appear until kind of recently and the brief time that they've been around they've kind of gone through some of the most intense world revolutionizing historical events possibly imagined. Yet they've come out working hard and building their way up to become a world superpower. You gotta give it to them. There's something about the Germans. And with that, final boss level complete. Stay tuned. Another African state Germany has ties to Ghana is coming up next. Brilliant. I love that. Really, really in-depth about um, the, well, the economy was a good thing to learn because obviously Germany is one of the strongest economies in the world. But post um, the Second World War, how they managed to rebuild the country economically um, was in the 60s, he said, and um, invested so much time and effort into um, like things like car manufacturing and things like that, getting labour, um, loads of German labour uh, being done and producing loads and loads of different German brands that have just took off and are world renowned now. Um, I think they are really one of the countries in the world when you think of engineering at, at its top end. Germany is probably the first that comes to my mind anyway. They, they are probably the best on the planet, to be fair. But um, very interesting to learn about all the different states within Germany. I, wasn't, I never really knew that, that they had different linguistics, the way they spoke a different language, sorry. Um, and obviously the relationships of their neighbouring countries are very, very good. Um, I do know about Berlin, obviously, from Berlin was split east and west. And there's still evidence of that divide now. If you were to visit Berlin, you can still see that divide there economically as well as physically. If you go into the place, you can see that some of it hasn't yet even moved on. It's still left the way it was during the Cold War times. However, Germany is a country which I love. I've been to a couple of times and I, I really do enjoy visiting. And um, obviously, footballing-wise... I'm a, f a huge football supporter. Germany has been tremendous over the year, producing some incredible football players um, who have played in various different clubs around the world. But as I said, probably a country that are mo I'm more familiar with in terms of the automobile world. You've got some unbelievable brands such as Volkswagen, Mercedes, Audi, um, did I say BMW? But anyway... Unbelievable engineers, incredible country, great people, and that was an absolutely amazing watch made by Geography. Now, um, do check their stuff out and do subscribe to their channel because they do loads of cool stuff and they even break down into further detail the countries that they, you see um, in their videos there now. So, as I said, check them out. I hope you've enjoyed the reactions. There wasn't much I could say. There was so much in-depth description and this thing I was trying to learn um, also react slightly but learn about Germany I do know I'm quite familiar with Germany as I said, he mentioned as well the Autobahn which is the slickest most efficient motor uh, <laughs> motorway well it's like a motorway isn't it but it's the most efficient one on the planet I mean you jump in a car and bang you do any speed you want there's relatively low accidents on it they're quite straight, they're wide. As I said, it's just German engineering at its best. Put the boot down, get to where you've got to go and as fast a time as possible, brilliant. Nobody wants to hang around in traffic, winding and weaving. It's all flat and straight and wide. It's a pleasure to go on. Uh, fantastic as well. So I, had to, I forgot about that, so I'm glad I mentioned that there. But um, yes, the stereotypes of Germany as well. You think the lederhosen beer, um, the big hot dogs and everything, you know. Um, Stereotypical things can be annoying, but also if you're going to aim 
uh, to sell stuff to tourists, you have to keep that alive as well because I know places like Munich um, and Bavaria are very, very popular because of that reason. You've got um, the Oktoberfest where people drink the big pitchers of beer. I can't remember the actual name, so apologies for that. But with stereotypes, does bring its benefits too. Um, and obviously, that is what people would associate with Germany. But fantastic place. I hope you've enjoyed my reaction to it. If you've anything else you'd like to see me reacting to, please feel free to drop a comment in the section below. And don't forget, guys, fire that notifications bell on as well so you don't miss any uploads that we release onto our channel. And I am the Dawnfaller. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.